Hello there and welcome from sunny South Wales in the United Kingdom and it is a sunny day today it's a lovely blue sky I've got my hat on what more could I want this uh, take this off though I am indoors but today I'm going to talk about supplements and particularly vitamin D3 uh, how it uh, has helped me in my role with CRPD. It was during a talk with a company doctor many years ago when I was forced to retire to ill health that D3 came to my attention quite by accident. The last year of my working life I hardly did any work at all until eventually I was called in by the company to see the company doctor who explained to me that uh, he didn't think I would work again because of the CRPD that I had. And he went on to explain that uh, he was an army doctor previously, he was based in Cyprus and uh, in many of the places that he had served in warmer, sunnier climates, uh, there was very little chest illness. Now this had come to my attention before and I assumed that living in somewhere nice and warm were, had great advantages and uh, that was the reason. Now, it struck me that uh, in the end it wasn't the warmth, it was the sun. It's the way vitamin D works. Um, it's produced naturally by the skin and the body and a vitamin D, they call it a vitamin, it's actually a hormone and turning out to be one of the most important hormones that the body has. It helps with bones, it helps with the immune system, it helps with so many things just go along and google it and you'll be absolutely amazed now i realized that what it was was people living in sunny climates they got lots of sunshine the body got lots of vitamin d now as we came further north towards say the united kingdom here there's only six months of the year that the sun is any good and then for the vast majority of that it's cloudy so we're not getting it anyway Making the matter worse is that people with CRPD don't get out an awful lot because of their condition. And certainly not as much as when they're younger. Research had also indicated that a vitamin D supplement would help people with CRPD because amazingly the majority of people with, with CRPD had been found to be very low in vitamin D. Now, I did a bit more research and I was quite amazed that in places like Greece where a lot more people smoke than in the UK or did at the time, uh, lung cancer was much lower than it was in the UK. Uh, and this followed the trend that uh, in sunnier climates any chest illness was less. I also realised that uh, people here in the UK and Scotland uh, they don't live so long in Scotland. The, uh, the longevity is shorter. I also found that in places that had very long winters the suicide rate was quite high and it seemed to follow a trend that people were more depressed uh, the further north they went and they were more likely to be suicide. This couldn't just be an accident of choice and uh, we eventually went on to have a, an experiment with other people with COPD and uh, it was quite remarkable that so uh, very few of us went down with colds, we had less exacerbations and generally felt fitter because we were taking a supplement. In my case I started to take 2000 IU of vitamin D3 and I was amazed that uh, in the first year uh, seasonal adjusted disorder that I used to suffer from from November right through to April disappeared. I didn't feel sad no more. It's called it's called sad, amazingly. And since starting D3, I haven't suffered depression through the winter at all. It has a remarkable effect. Also, I've had no hospital admissions, 
at all since uh, starting my experiments with vitamin D many years ago and I've actually only had one cold in all that time and that cold wasn't really a bad one that's despite having my grandchildren around me quite often sniffling with all the colds and everything they normally get through especially through the winter months and coming into contact once with somebody with flu um, which worried me greatly in case I went down with flu I had no effects and I can only assume that the vitamin D3 as what uh, helped me. I started with 2000 IU of vitamin D3 and I increased it to 5000 now I've increased it to 10,000 it hasn't had any toxic effects on me whatsoever there's quite a lot of research going into it a lot of uh, scientists are saying now the recommended levels particularly here in the UK 400 IU is abysmally low in fact 400 IU would just make sure that you you, you didn't get the uh, bad uh, bones or anything like that I had to go for a bone scan because I take uh, prednisolone or prednisone it's called in America it's a steroid and it weakens the bones it's known to cause osteoarthritis so I was sent along for a bone scan I told the doctor my secret that I'd actually been taking vitamin D3 uh, he was quite surprised and said well it's going to be great we'll see what uh, what happens here whether it has actually saved your bones the result of the scan was that my bones were stronger than is normal for my age uh, for somebody without COPD so it actually paid off now I must uh, I, I must add that with vitamin D3 it's a hormone uh, it will help uh, build your immune system it will help to stop exacerbations and you go on a rolling cycle of exacerbations if you get an exacerbation it harms the lungs it takes ages to get over it slowly your condition gets worse now I have had very few exacerbations in the last few years particularly since I increased it to 10,000 I've had even less in fact I haven't had an exacerbation all winter which is actually remarkable everyone around me has gone down on this is I haven't nor has my wife incidentally who also takes vitamin D3 but I must add that by taking D3 it helps to get the calcium into the uh, into the bones but it goes into the blood first now what you don't want is the calcium forming onto veins and arteries it would harden them so to help with that we take vitamin K2 they go together with D3 I take one of these a vitamin K2 this one is done by true I don't get nothing for telling you the make uh, and it's uh, 100 N M C G micrograms I presume uh, some take two but make sure if you take a high dose of D3 they also take a vitamin K2 now as well as that getting on to, off of vitamin K I also take NAC uh, it's a set of Christine or something like that Google NAC and you'll find out all about it this thins the mucus and makes everything coming up quickly it means it's not thick and congested if it's thick and congested it's a great breeding place for germs you don't want all the mucus remaining on your chest you want it loose you want to be able to move it NAC is the way to do it I take two of these I take one in the morning one at night now you can get macadine and all kinds of things from the doctor I did at one time I had macadine I took it it affected my stomach so I went on to NAC which doesn't affect my stomach it's not expensive it's available on Amazon in many places in many countries of the world NAC is used as a first line with COPD it's actually prescribed in many parts it's not prescribed here it used to be years and years ago I started to make a comeback amongst us that have COPD because we normally find it's kind of on the body be aware though that for some people these things can have side effects I've never had a side effect I don't know anybody that has had side effects but if you want to give it a try it's worth a try now 
Another thing is LRG9 that I tried. This is used for a kind of by athletes and all kinds of people. It's a, a mono acid or something like that, amino acid. And um, what it's supposed to do is help on inflammation. Now, as most people know, we suffer from an inflammatory disease. So that what it's worth a go. We'll 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 have it. We'll have a go and we'll see what it does. And uh, I took it for some while. I take two steroid tablets a day uh, to as a as a dose to help keep the inflammation down. Now I found while taking this that I could go down to just one tablet a day, uh, which was quite amazing because one tablet does not affect you in effect so I was told by my specialist it will help keep the inflammation down but it won't cause any side effects that uh, steroids can actually cause. Now I got it down to one but then I stopped taking the RG9 uh, and I forgot all about, about it. I carried on with the one prednisolone tablet as I had done and then started to get out of breath and uh, I thought maybe I should go back to two steroids and then I remembered ah but I've stopped the RG9 so has the RG9 been keeping the inflammation down okay I won't take the extra um, prednisolone I'll go back on the RG9 and that's what I did and I haven't taken the extra prednisolone because I found that my breathing started to get better again obviously the inflammation was coming under control and uh, that seems to have worked for me. Now, whether it worked for you, I don't know. It's just something that you may want to know about. Now, I also have tried taurine. Someone said to me, taurine's supposed to be good for the lungs. Now, I'm a mug, <laughs> so as many of us. If something's going to be good for the lungs, I'm going to try it. No, it didn't seem to do anything for the lungs. It's supposed to be good for the heart. I have AF, so it's worth a go for that. Uh, it done nothing for the AF. What it did seem to do was to improve my eyesight a little bit, and apparently it's supposed to do that. If anyone, any of you guys have ever tried taurine, and you've had good results with it, please let me know. Now, another one that I have tried is serapeptase. It was very expensive. I took it for a long time because... Uh, Apparently it's supposed to cure everything from an ongoing, ingrowing toenail to cancer and beyond and uh, it just did absolutely nothing for me. Um, in fact, it was during this time that I was quite ill and I'm not saying it's got anything to do with serapeptase, but there was a warning to be careful with it. Uh, so if you do decide to go down that route, take care. But remember, it's an awful lot of money and uh, it uh, did absolutely nothing for me. Anyway, that's it for now. I think I've told you everything. Uh, next time I'm going to talk about the value of exercise. Uh, death by chair. That's a nice one to talk about, isn't it? And we will, at some point in the very near future, talk about the bump. This is uh, where you go from uh, being okay to COPD suddenly becomes much worse. So I'll talk to you again soon, breathe easy and have a good day.